of the Z-Hive. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can variably speed control your AC power tools. Now, there's many, many, many applications for this. Now, like I have my uh, little wheel grinder here. Say you put a polishing wheel on here, and you're going to buff up some aluminum. Well, you put your compound on the aluminum, and you turn this on, it's only full on, or full off, one speed. It's going to spin so fast, it's going to burn that compound right off the aluminum. It's not going to polish it correctly. Now, if you vary the speed, or you can turn it down to about half speed, is about right for buffing on one of these. Um, and this is uh, a Makita grinder. Um, this is probably just slightly better than the Chinese. Um, but um, yeah, if you could slow this down to about half speed, it's going to buff and work perfect. Another use um, some of your older drills. They only had one speed, and I'm talking older ones from like the 70s, 80s, and I actually have a couple of them, and they work good, but they only got one speed. Now, if you go and buy a newer drill, a Chinese young generic one from China, it's going to probably have a two or three speed. It's not going to be um, a full variable. It's going to have like two or three positions as you pull the trigger for... Um, the speeds and in a case like that you probably ain't going to need to control the speed but on your older drills I've got actually two old Black & Decker drills from either the 79 or 80 somewhere right in there and they work better than the new drills that I bought and well sometimes you don't want that thing running full speed um, another use for being able to control the speed of your AC power tool. Say you have a uh, belt sander. Well, most belt sanders, uh, they're going to have one speed or two. Um, it's usually one or two speeds. I have seen quite a few with two. But then again, you know, you buy the cheap Chinese-made Taiwan ones. They're going to probably be one speed, possibly two. And they're inexpensive. And that's one of the reasons why they're inexpensive. They don't have all the features. But um, a reason you might want to control the speed on that, say you had a little something like wood piece that's really small and you just want to do a little fine finish sanding and you didn't want to sit and do it by hand. Well, if you turn that speed down and you put a fine um, grit sanding paper on that belt sander, you could easily sand it by hand and it would be a little easier than doing it completely by hand. But um, no, there is two ways. To do this, and, um, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. The wrong way, I've seen pretty much all the videos I've seen here on YouTube is the wrong way of controlling the speed. They're using the um, the dimmer switches for house lights. Um, these can be used for your lights and your ceiling fans. These are not made to handle the amount of amperage that a tool like this pulls. A ceiling fan does not pull anywhere near the amperage that this thing does. Um, they work for short term, but if you were going to be running this thing for like 20-30 minutes straight and you're using one of the cheap dimmer controls, it's going to probably overheat. It might even start on fire or minimum melt. They're not made for it. They are not. Now, they do make some bigger industrial ones for like giant chandeliers like you see in motel lobbies and restaurants, but they're going to be about to start getting as expensive as what I'm going to show you here in a moment, which is a really good way for doing this and not have to worry about starting something on fire. So with that, why don't we just take a look at it and get right to it, and then I'll plug this in and demonstrate it working, and um, I got it sitting right here. And what we have is called a Variac. And what this is, is it's a transformer that you plug in, and I actually have it plugged in down below here underneath the table. I've got um, a plug-in, and it's plugged in. You plug it into the wall, your 110, 
and then you plug in the item that you want to control the speed of on your plug. If it doesn't have a plug, it'll have terminals. This particular one has a plug on it. And then it can control the voltage, AC voltage, from 140 to 0 volts. Now you're saying, well, this is 110, why is it 140? Take your voltmeter, put it on AC, set the range so it'll handle 140, 150. Plug it in your socket. It's going to be about 135, 140 volts. They just call it 120. Um, you don't believe me, try it. Just be careful because um, you don't do it right. You could hurt yourself or possibly kill yourself. But yes, trust me, it does work. So what we have is... Now the main reason to go this route um, Number one, you can use this with pretty much any of your power tools. Um, you are not going to probably, unless you get a really big one of these, which is going to start being expensive, you're not going to want to try to control a drill press with it. The nice thing about drill presses and big stuff like that, they usually have different pulleys so you can adjust the speeds. This is going to be more for like your drills, sanders, grinding wheels, stuff like that. And that's another use. You got a grinding wheel? Well, let's Say um, you get a honing stone for it. Well, you don't want the thing running at full speed if you're trying to sharpen a knife on a honing stone with a grinder. Using this, you can turn it down about half or quarter speed, and you'll sharpen that knife up without destroying it. All right, well, I'm going to turn this on. There we go. So I had the trigger already on. I forgot to turn it off. That was full speed. Full speed full voltage. Now I'm going to turn it back on and then I'm going to turn it down and watch this. Hundred volts, 80 volts, 60, 40, 30, 20, Oh, much under 20 ain't going to have much power, but if you really wanted to, we could turn it down even lower. There's 10. See, it's still spinning. And of course, you put it at zero, it's going to shut it off. Now, just remember, there are some power tools, like some saws and stuff, you probably are not going to want to use this on because they have cooling features built in that need to be running at the full speed. So, um... But for something like this, your um, grinders and drills, this is perfectly safe. You're not going to have any problems. And beans are so cheap anyway. If you do burn it out, I mean, you go buy one of these cheap Chinese um, grinders like this. Go to like Harbor Freight or an Unclaimed Freight or Northern Hydraulics and other places. The other places that sell the cheap tools, you're going to get one of these cheap Chinesium type grinders for like 20 bucks. Um, if you go and buy a name brand, you know, something like DeWalt or Makita or one of the other, this is a Makita, but it's a cheaper one, I do believe. You get the more expensive ones, you will get variable speeds on them. And it'll usually just be a switch with a couple speeds, but for the cheap stuff, I mean, if you're just doing stuff around the house, why spend all that money? You can go buy one of these, and this is going to cost you around $50 to $100. Now, yes, it is an investment, but you can use it with all of your power tools. All. Anything that runs on 110, you can control with this. So, um, and you can get these cheaper. And this is used as well. Um, if you go buy one of these new, they are really expensive. So I do recommend used. Because this one here, this is back from like the 80s, maybe early 90s. And it's still in awesome shape. Uh, I got a heck of a deal on it. But you can find them where they're beat up a little bit. And I've seen them as low as like 25, 30 bucks. And they're just beat up a little. You just clean them up, um, take the dents out. You know, scrub the grime off. All of a sudden, it's worth three times what you paid for it. And look what it can do. I mean, there's all kinds of applications for this. Um, you can even control the fan with it. You know, if you got one of the big industrial fans that's only got one, two speeds, maybe you want to control it a little more. Throw this on there. Alright, well I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, 
just get down to the point, like I said, don't use the dimmer switches for your household lights and ceiling fans. It's not safe as you'd think. Um, for something small, maybe this, if you weren't using it for a long period of time, you probably could get away with it. But I just don't recommend it. I mean, this here will handle a lot more amperage than one of them. And if you go and get one of the commercial uh, dimmer switches, it's like for the giant chandeliers and stuff. Some of them are going to pretty much be a Variac, and the other ones, they're going to be so expensive. You might as well just buy one of these anyway. And, no. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please um, give me a thumbs up. So, I'd like to say, uh, have a great day, and we hope to see you here again.